I'm Rick. Good to meet everybody, uh, if I haven't already met you. Um, while folks are joining, um, I'm going to share my screen here. And I want to just uh, remind everybody of a few things that are available to you as far as resources uh, online that are related to this type of content. Um, so give me a minute. I'll share my screen, and then uh, we'll dive in. Uh, in just a second. All right, hopefully you are seeing my screen now. So I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. Um, we have a couple of moderators from our team that are on. So if you have questions, just uh, use the Q&A tab there. Um, it looks like um, maybe some folks already, yep, Zach just sort of uh, introduced himself and he's there along with Adrian from our team. All right, great. So savvy you, we've been at this for a few weeks. It's been, you know, experimental. Hopefully those that have been attending and finding the articles online, you can easily access all of our prior uh, savvy you uh, sessions from realsavvy.com. There's a savvy you button at the top. You can also get to it from our uh, um, kind of chat bot, which you can see here at the bottom right of your screen when you're on help.realsavvy.com. It's also there when you're on crm.realsavvy.com, which we'll cover um, in further detail here in a minute. Uh, but you have uh, a lot of resources available that cover many of the things I'm gonna go through today um, in help.realsavvy.com. Uh, so it's always available to you here. Also, for those that do not know, um, and many of you have responded, I think, to, to come in uh, to this meeting, in fact. Um, we post a lot of uh, updates, new features. Uh, we try to poll our group of brokers, teams, and agents for what do you think about this, you know, way of describing something or this, this feature that we're considering building here in our Real Savvy Owners Community Group. Um, this is... Uh, put it here in chat for anyone that has not joined. It's uh, an invitation um, by invitation. So once you request to join, then we will um, uh, accept you, of course. Uh, so you can see here, there's lots of stuff about different CRM features as they're coming, just things that are going on in the marketplace, and then um, a host of other um, hopefully useful bits of information um, for you to find. All right, well, let's get going. So we are at 12.04, and um, I'm gonna dive in here to a little presentation deck that I'm gonna kind of bounce in and out of uh, to show you more of the live platform than just slides, but the slides will help us uh, guide through the, uh, the content. So my objective today is for those that may have not seen a full demo, oftentimes we only demo the broker, the, the, purchase, the person that purchased Real Savvy from us. So um, we wanna make Savvy U available for targeted information. Like last week, we went really deep on how to create long tail SEO and win page one. Um, prior weeks, we've talked about new CRM features, et cetera. We're going to cover all of it today. So this is kind of a, uh, the whole ribeye, as we might say in Texas. Um, I'm Rick, uh, CEO and co-founder of Real Savvy. We're, we're five years into the company. We have uh, tens of thousands of agents across you know, hundreds of markets using the platform. And we're delighted to have you as well. Um, I myself am a, a realtor broker in Austin. Most of my life has been building technology companies, but I've also been a, a, a realtor broker since uh, uh, 1998. So I know a lot of your pains and 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 opportunities for improvement in the space. And that's really our our driving mission in with Real Savvy is to make it easy for agents to work with their clients. Now you see that from us in the form of our collaboration features, our, our investment in mobile, uh, the mobile app, and, and really a consumer leaning experience on the front end so that agents can pull their clients away from maybe the, the portals like uh, uh, Zillow and, and Redfin or, or whatever it may be. A lot is happening in our industry, a lot of technology discussions going on, a lot of uh, promise of AI and automation. We're very much aligned with much of that vision. Um, and there's a lot of just simply tactical things that you have available to you with Real Savvy 
that you could and, and should be using um, here as we embark on uh, the buying season. In fact, we're in the buying season as everyone would, would know, selling season, buying season. So just as a quick uh, refresher, these are the things that we do. We have customizable websites, depending on the purchase that you made with Real Savvy or that your broker made with Real Savvy, there's different levels of customizations. We have dedicated themes for those with big budgets that want to really create a unique experience from scratch. We have really powerful themes, which is what we'll cover mostly today, which is more common with our, our customers where they're, they're beautiful, they're mobile optimized, they're intensely SEO friendly, consumer friendly, and they connect well with our IDX data, uh, the uh, CRM, um, our marketing dashboard, which I'll remind everyone if, you, if you're not familiar of it, uh, with it, and our, of course, mobile app, as mobile apps tend to be the ways that consumers use our platform across all of our customers once agents share them. So I want to focus today a bit on how you share and just remind you of, of ways that you can get people into your database uh, as an agent uh, with confidence, even if you're sharing your main website of your broker, that if you're logged in and you're sharing from the website or the app, that you're the leads that you are uh, ultimately get from those links will, will will show up and be attributed in your in your CRM. Um, this is more of a technical overview, but but briefly, um, this is what we do. You know, we 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 have these front end websites, this collaborative IDX mobile apps for Android and iPhone that are fully branded with the agent journey mixed in and a CRM to back it all so that you can see the insights of who's looking at what and when and create these lists for marketing purposes. Uh, if you have a team, you can route leads and, and we'll go into a few of those features here in a minute. Um, we have access to you know, effectively all of the MLS feeds across the country. You don't have all of them necessarily active, but if you have brokers or peers or friends in other markets that you think would benefit from our wares, then please let them know that we'd be happy to expand their direction. And on the right side are some of the things that we integrate with. It's not exhaustive, but you know we integrate with old school CRMs like Salesforce, new school CRMs like Follow Up Boss. Uh, Zapier allows us to integrate with thousands of applications for creating users from another app that might have captured a lead or import from your Google uh, account to um, uh, triggering uh, form data and new users into other systems like you might do with RealVault or, or other CRMs. Uh, and then oftentimes brokers access our APIs directly. This tends to require a developer um, and there's a separate kind of billing relationship there, but just so that you know what is available to you. All right, so I'm going to go through a few slides and I'm then going to go back and forth into a live version of each so that you can kind of see what it is we do, um, kind of soup the nuts and make sure that everybody's aware of, of all the power that you have to, to connect and stay connected with your, um, with, your, with your clients, buyers and sellers. Um, this is a video, uh, it's on YouTube. Rather than do this, we're gonna do a lot of this live, so I'm gonna skip this. Um, let's talk first about the front end, which is most typically thought of as a website. Uh, but for us, that includes an integrated IDX. IDX in our industry means basically home search portal, if you're not familiar with the, the term, um, and the mobile apps that are geared around this agent client experience. Um, they're very customizable. We have uh, opportunities for individual agents. You can purchase uh, a do-it-yourself version from us, which is a, a full theme that will allow you to drag and drop what we call blocks. These are, might be what you see here, a, a video cover or a contact form or blog previews and things like that into, into the websites. So where we started five years ago, we, we did a lot of the upfront customizations for, for folks. And, you know, look, it, it, it's a costly endeavor. Um, you know, it takes a lot of human time to do those things. So over time, we've built a much more evolved platform after we've heard feedback from literally uh, tens of thousands of, of, of people over five years as to what they need to be successful. And we feel that we've largely captured what any broker, team, or agent would need to market themselves, capture leads, invite consumers into an experience that's on brand and ideally away from 
the national portals, and that's represented most obviously in, in, in our websites. But so you have do-it-yourself versions where you can build pages to your heart's content. Um, and then we have the ability, if you have needs, and we'll cover a few of these things here in just a second, uh, I'm going to show you some new features, some new parts of the, func uh, the platform that many of you may be interested in. They're paid features, just to be clear. They don't come out of the box, but uh, I want to show you what the, the platform is, is capable of. So let me step out of this momentarily and into the actual live platform. So from a website perspective, not all of you need access to this, but I wanna, I wanna do a fairly broad brush um, overview here. Uh, we have what we call our website builder, and it looks something like this. And again, you may or may not be a user of this specifically, but it's important for everybody to know what's capable, what platform's capable of, because you may, may never have thought to ask your broker if you're an individual agent for, hey, what if we tried this? Like, what if we tried a specific neighborhood page to, to capture leads and things like that? Um, so let me take this a little bit full screen. There we go. And so this is the builder. And when I talk about themes, what's really important to note is that you have a lot of control or whomever your admin of the back end has a lot of control to change fonts and colors and, and even add what's called CSS is what the way the look and feel will, will be rendered on the website uh, with a very simple, simple back end. Um, you have the ability to author blogs and attribute them to individual agents. Um, you have the ability to uh, modify and update your, your team pages that would be the individual agents with the you know, options to change the way the photos look on the screen, um, the different types of things that are shown like offices and addresses and whatnot. So this is what's going on behind there. Now, every agent from their CRM login, if you have a website with us, and note some of you may just be using our IDX or our app or even our CRM, but uh, in the event that you're using our, our website, which is most common, um, our CRM logins for agents will bring you to these individual pages so that the agents themselves can update their photo and their bio. And that's really important um, because many of you have large teams and it's, it's a lot to, to manage. And so we're trying to make uh, you know, every aspect of, of, of the real savvy experience as simple as possible. Um, this is where you'll see all of the pages that have been configured. But before I go there, let me show you one more thing, which is the settings. And so this is the area of the back end where one would configure the SEO. We, we pre-populate this typically during the setup, even if it's a DIY, we wanna help you with a few hours of our time to make sure that you're, you know, not everyone's aware of the best thing on SEO and how to capture kind of page one for specific search terms. And so this is uh, available. Um, as a just a, a brief uh, bit of education, if you're not aware, there's a concept of open graph, and this is the when you share something. If you ever share something on Real Sav and you're like, where did that photo come from? Oftentimes it's this, and this is an image that you can change to the season. We have people that might change this to be a fall type of imagery or summer type of imagery or something related to. Um, you know, uh, a new market they're in or whatever. And so those things are, are, are specific ways that people would use open graph. Um, and then on the back end, there are things that will allow you to drop in integration elements for follow-up boss and, and other types of things that make the system talk to external uh, products. For those things, you probably want to just email support at willsavvy.com and we'll, we'll help you through your journey there. And then if you're coming from or have come from a, an existing URL and you had some old links that you really liked, you can come in here and you can redirect them to a new link on your new page. And so we try to make it, this is important for our, some of our larger clients, some of which have pulled five and 6,000 URLs over that you know were, were gaining some level of Google juice and you didn't want to lose them. So just so you know, that's what's going on on the back end. On the front end, the page builders allow you to create this really... Um, contextual market data. And this is available to anybody that has access to the back end. It, it works on a, a very simple kind of cloning type of model where if you, if you come up with something like you'll see here is a good demo uh, example. So Settler South Congress is what this broker has set up as an area where it's pulling 
all of the listings from this particular uh, establishment. This is not this broker's listings, but but they're able to you know attribute them appropriately to the other uh, other listing agent. But these are crawled by Google so that you can start to win uh, people searching for these types of things. So think of this as a building. If you're doing condos or or anything like that, you want to create a condo page that'll have a custom search for that. Um, it, we can help you with the first one and then you can clone that and, and, and create as many as you'd like. Oftentimes there'll be an hourly charge to do things like this, but it's, it's relatively nominal compared to what you would have to spend to get these types of, of leads on Zillow and, and things of that nature. And so if we come into Settler South Congress onto Google here, uh, you'll see that that particular site is almost as high up on a page as you could ever hope to be from pure organic um, ahead of some of the most condo specific and, and otherwise well-established brands here in the Austin market. And so that's exactly what you're after. And, and the platform in, in our last session of Savvy, you went into this in, in, in copious detail with Adrian himself kind of explaining it. So I encourage you to go back and, and have a look at that, but I just want to touch on the way that this works. And so once you have something that you really love, you simply clone it and then you can create another building page and another set of queries for, for property data. So that's, that's the power of the front end. On the theme itself, and this again is just so you know how the, the platform works, there are a lot of available to anyone blocks. These are things that you can change your navigation and whatnot. With great power comes great responsibility. It's possible that you can break something. So you should be aware of that and know that, you know, when you publish something, it's really published to the internet, but you can look here and see that, you know, that what it's going to look like on mobile and you can feel comfortable that you're ready to publish once that happens. But anyway, it's because not everyone knows what all is back here. There's a ton of proven blocks, again, as we call them, that will allow you to focus on your sold gallery of recent homes that you and your office have sold or specific neighborhoods or, you know, fun ways to represent photos and people through the journey on your front end website. Um, YouTube integrations and, 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 and things of that nature. So it's a deeper discussion. We'll do an, you know, an entire savvy you on this, but it's important to set up what the builder is capable of so that you can understand how you can utilize it to win lead capture in, a, in the most cost-effective way possible. And that is you know, organic, letting Google do the work for you by, by showing up high in, in search. Um, Moving ahead a bit, um, and I'll, 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 rather than go back and forth from the presentation, I'll just kind of dive straight in. So we covered the front end website, just a quick refresher of what all, is capa what all the capabilities are there. The, the lead capture elements are many. You've got from the website, of course, forms. Now these forms can be customized. We have brokers who have implemented lots of renter criteria property management criteria, particularly one of our brokers in San Antonio has done a great job of this. And, and, and all of that is, is easily configured again here on, on the back end. Uh, just quickly show you what that looks like here. There's a form and if you wanted to add different types of fields, you could do so here. Um, so that's how lead capture happens from the website. Um, from the IDX or the home search platform, let me do something quickly here and I'll open up that very site and show you a few of the ways that you can uh, capture leads there. So um, it looks like I'm already logged in as somebody. So let me, no, I'm not, sorry, thought it was. Uh, it's sort of hanging on to an old session here, but I'm not logged in. And so if I wanted to ask a question about a property, then you have this request a showing option, which is you know available here on each property. And again, I'm in the IDX now, which is should be what it looks like on your respective websites. Um, and so when I request a showing, it's gonna allow me to capture gradient data. This is not going to create an IDX account for them, but I'll show you here in a moment how you will do that from the CRM for those that haven't uh, registered fully, you can register for them and then uh, set up searches and everything from there. So this is a, a very popular and common way that people who don't want to give everything yet, they don't really want an account yet, they, 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 they may even give you bad data here. 
heads up, we don't know if Mickey Mouse is really uh, Mickey Mouse or, or a fake person. What we are doing though, that's very important is we're tracking all the activity. So if someone keys in Mickey Mouse here and then on that computer, eventually register as Bob Newhart, who perhaps is a real person, um, the CRM is gonna have both the Mickey Mouse contact data and the Bob Newhart contact data on the same CRM record in your people list. That's important to know because when people aren't comfortable yet sharing information, you wanna know if you need to continue following up with Mickey Mouse or not. So that's just kind of a bit of a, a, an aside and a pro tip. So we make all of these things required info to make sure that we get you as much information as we can um, so that you can be you know, immediately responsive to them. So I'll bail out of that for a minute. And another way that people would, would register is they would, of course, try to save something or, or sign in. And we invite them like, look, you're gonna get more information. You're gonna be able to do more things if you register and it's a, an effective way to get people to sign up. So I'm gonna register as SavvyU at realsavvy.com. It's a new user, I think. And yeah, it, it is. And so I'll be savvy, you know, you in this case and some phone number that's meaningful for the market and a password. Now, passwords are only required when they sign up this way. If you register them from the CRM, you can create what's called a magic link, and then everything they get will just log them in automatically. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. But let's stay focused on the IDX so everybody knows the, the, the most popular features that you can use here. Uh, one of the most popular features that I think is very unique, something you have, with your real savvy platform that you can share with your clients that even, especially on the mobile app, Redfin and others do not have. And that is really rich neighborhood search. And this is available in, in virtually every market. You will live in a market that we may not know everything about, right? We're in hundreds of markets, so there's these limitations on what we know. We're in Austin, so I can easily demo what the neighborhood searches would look like here. But oftentimes you may find that there's a very popular neighborhood, maybe even a new neighborhood, we have a third party data provider. And so what we need to know is the neighborhoods you're not seeing are the neighborhoods that you would like to default for your search, which you can do uh, in a way that's similar to this here. I'll come back to this in a minute. Um, so you can see here, I've got these canned searches and you can have the same, you just need to tell us. Uh, depending on your, you know, your, how you purchase Real Savvy, there may be a little bit of a charge for us to set this up for you one time. So you know, we tend to advise people to come with the things that you'd like to show from schools and neighborhoods and whatnot. But this is a really great way to get people moving into a search. And so uh, let me go into the same view that I was on there and I'll show you how this works. Um, and so I could start typing Bolden Creek or I could simply select it from the list and it instantly brings just the homes that are active for sale and house currently. This is the default filters I have set up here. Um, for that neighborhood. Now, Bolden Creek is part of a, a particular zip code that has a few other interesting neighborhoods near it, one of which is Travis Heights. And so I'll just add to my search and type Travis Heights, and then it's gonna put that adjacent neighborhood there automatically. This is a great tip for agents. So this is Interstate 35. You all have something similar, which is a, a road that, you know, Maybe you can get value by living close to it, but many consumers don't wanna live next to something that's noisy. In fact, uh, there's two noisy places. The con Congress neighborhood here is very loud because it's like kind of our, our, our popular tourist area. And this is a popular driving area. It's like constantly bumper to bumper traffic. Uh, so oftentimes agents will, will, will be, I guess I'll be kitschy and use the word savvy, and they'll draw within the neighborhood boundaries away from these busy, noisy areas, a couple of other polygons. And so now that I don't want all the rest of Travis Heights, I can just get rid of that original area. And I might not want that noisy Congress Avenue either. So I can come and kind of draw between the lines like we learned in elementary school and get rid of Bolden Creek. And now then I've got potentially the perfect search areas for my clients who said, don't put me near anything noisy. And so the, since this is 78704, uh, let me do a couple things and I'll revise the search. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a saved search, obviously. And so they didn't wanna go 
over 1.5, and that yields 15 results, which is maybe a, a decent size search for, for, for most clients to start to get daily or instant or even weekly alerts with. And so what I know now, though, is I've got this search set up for a client where they, they're not going to get the noise. They're in the neighborhoods they want or the school districts they want. And so I can save the search as, let's just call it 78704, not noisy. And I'll set it to daily because they're a few weeks out from purchase and I don't want to hit them every 15 minutes with an update. Um, and so now I've got this saved search and I've created it as an agent. The consumer will create it the exact same way. There is no difference from the way that the consumer and you will create these searches. And so with that, I have the opportunity to invite them. Now, if I have set them up in my CRM before, then they would be here. But let's go do that. Let's imagine that I have not done that and they have not registered on the site. So I'm gonna segue out of the front end of save searches for a minute because I'm ready to invite someone into the search and I'm gonna go into the CRM. Before I go too deeply into that, I wanna show you a few things. We've recently added, um, our, our customer success team has added tours that will take you on your first login to crm.realsavvy.com. Again, you all have, the, it's the same login here, that you would have used here, exact same. If you ever don't remember your password, you can change your password on your website, right, on the IDX. Uh, we're working to add the ability to change the password on the CRM. The reasons why that's not there are technical, but we will have that available to you soon. But in the meantime, in, and as you can always find in our helper, um, if you, in the bottom right of your CRM, if you don't know how to change your password, just simply go to your website, Look, click search homes and then behind your gear here you can change your password but let's assume everybody can get in um, if you've never logged in before it's possible that we set up your password as real savvy all lowercase with your email and so that's just a, a, a heads up but if you can't find it you can't figure it out and if the help down here doesn't guide you towards it then of course crm.realsavvy.com or you can just start a conversation with us here Okay, so I'm gonna go through this quickly. I'm not gonna to go through the whole tour. That'll be best for you to do as you can learn a lot just by following these next buttons. But it's basically gonna walk you through ways that you can edit your own agent page, ways that you can um, keep track of where your leads are coming from and moving them through your, your, your conversion funnel. Um, what people are, these are your contacts that you can also set up IDX accounts for, et cetera. We're gonna spend a moment on that here in just a minute. Um, lists. We're going to cover lists in a minute. This is a way that you can create marketing lists and farming lists and import lists. And then settings is, is a host of things that are different for admins versus agents. But let's, let's rather than go through all of this, just show you quickly that there are these journeys and they're available in almost every new experience that you have so that you can better learn the system and, and, and get used to, to using it. I'm impersonating an agent right now. This is a feature that you have as an admin, um, but I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do what I was suggesting before, which is I'm gonna create a user so that I can share this perfect 78704 noisy search with right now. Okay, so I'm in the CRM. I'm logged in as me, Rick the agent. And so I come into people and I don't have someone named Tiger Woods as a current client and of course we would all love to have tiger woods as a real client so tiger woods and his number is i'm sure it's a florida number but i can't think of one offhand so let's just do 310 da, 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 da. so i'm just putting fake information if i had his address and those other stuff i can put that there so tiger woods now is a new call it a contact in people it's someone that has done nothing on the site they do not know that tiger woods at realsavvy.com is even a thing um, on, on my system. But within the CRM, you can now create an IDX account for them. And then that will allow me, as you'll see in just a minute, to invite them to searches with what we call magic links. These are links that will just unfurl or open uh, instantly to a logged in state. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So I'm gonna click this button, very simple, create IDX account. And it will um, 
has created. So I may not have wanted that to be assigned to me. I may want to assign it to someone else. So I'll have to come in here and assign it to myself if that's what I wish to do. And now it's in there as a lead, but maybe I actually know this person. Or maybe it's even a past client, but for now let's call it a regular client. This is how you change your, your, your tags. Um, because I created it manually, I might say I met them at Starbucks, right? And, you know, um, and that they are um, a buyer and that they are uh, 120 days, right? Some, some, something I may want to come back later and find people in certain ways. And that's what your, your tags will do. Okay, so now that this person's created, um, when I come in here into the CRM, since I've created that IDX account, that was the all important step there, I can and should be able to find Tiger Woods in my database, right? And so these, this is where the CRM and your ability to take big lists and import them, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how you can create a list and import and create IDX accounts with, you know, automatically with one click. So if you have, you know, thousand people that you've been talking to over a 15 year career, I'm going to show you how you import them and you get exactly where I'm at right now with Tiger Woods. But so Tiger Woods, I want him on this search. He's going to move to Austin. He hates noise. This is the perfect search for him. And uh, if I had his wife's name or whatever, I could also add them in here now. But let's just say for, for the moment, this is all I was trying to do. And so Tiger is now invited. And so what just happened is separately, let's see if I can... Uh, Get this. Uh, I'll figure out how to get my email going here. Move it away from you a little bit. All right. So I just got this this here. Um, oh, sorry. Not sharing the. Uh, there we go. So I just got this right. So this is Rico invited Tiger Woods here to to the search, and so I want to view this safe search now. I'm gonna open what's called an incognito window. An incognito window just means that so that I don't have to keep logging out. This particular browser knows that I'm logged in as Rick, not Tiger. So I will just open a new incognito window and I'm gonna paste that link. Normally your consumers are just gonna click from that email. So what I'm doing right now is a bit more advanced just for demo purposes. But what I wanna show you is that remember Tiger Woods, we didn't create a password for him. We've not done anything to, to force his hand to be a registered user. We were controlling everything. And so Tiger, then when he clicks uh, that link, it's going to automatically, as you saw there, sign him in as Tiger. And this is what we call magic links. And so if you follow this simple flow of get people into the CRM, create an IDX account for them with an email address that they would be respond to, set up a search send it to them, invite them, they get a link, it opens them into a moment where they can start doing stuff, right? And this is where the rubber meets the road of creating data for you to understand how active they are, inviting them to invite them their, call it wife, um, uh, or co-buyer, um, or lender, or anybody else into the collaboration, which I'll show you here in a minute um, with Tiger. So now Tiger's seeing the search, and he is going to get an update every day of everything that changes in this particular search. And so that's the simple way to start with your platform. Get people in, um, create an IDX account for them, um, and, and get them to start searching. So I'm going to click these two Second Street listings quickly, and I'm going to do that and I'm gonna click this hillside one and then I'm gonna maybe ask a question about uh, Woodland. And so I'm gonna you know, ask uh, my agent here, Mr. Rick, can we see this? And so all the while, what you can't see is that my Apple Watch is blowing up. I'm getting alerts of various events of Tiger's online, he's, he's searching, he's saved something, he's asking a question. And those would be the ways that you would be prompted uh, to come in and search. So I'm gonna move this window over to my other laptop here for a minute, out of the way, and show you what's going on over here on the CRM. So in real time, and, and you'll just have to trust me here for a minute, I'm about to click 1225 Hillside, like I was doing before. And if you'll watch my screen, you'll see that it is all real time. So as someone is searching, it's constantly keeping track of all this data. It's creating all kinds of new bits of information about them. 
and tracking any of the forms or anything else that they're come that they're sending over. And this is how you use what started as a contact and now has evolved into a client or someone that's that's active and starting to to move towards you know some kind of a uh, an event that you would want them to, which is buying home or ask you a question. Let's spend a minute on this screen. So there's a lot going on here that you, you, you'll want to know about how you can then further nurture and, and keep this meaningful conversation going. Um, send email is an actual email integrated option. Now, again, depends. You have to have a full CRM license to have access to this. If you do not, you can contact us and, and our sales team can walk you or your, your broker through how to obtain it. Um, but in this case, I have an email integrated with Gmail, which means for Tiger here, I can, oh, by the way, if you didn't notice, I can tell the Tiger is online. Anyone that's online, you can see I'm online, you can see Tiger's online, we'll have this little green dot. Um, from the people screen, there's a lot that you can do. I'm going to show you in a minute. Let's stay focused on the details. So if I wanted to send Tiger an email, you know, great masters, then I can do that from here. And that's going to log in my, my activity view. Um, if I called him, I could say, you know, I called this number, uh, set up coffee for Friday. So you can add a little bit of a log. It's not a dialer. It's just simply logging for your own future posterity or for another agent that you may be transferring this previously cold lead to what all's going on. It has integrated SMS. And so this will allow, I've got a fake number here. So I'll show you this on a different account in a second, but you can two way text with them. In fact, just to keep the flow of things, let me just go over here and I'll show you what that looks like. Sort of schizophrenically talking to myself. Um, so this is the types of things that you can use the text for. Now the text is, is available again as a premium offering. Um, you can see that I've sent this email down here to Tiger. Um, you can um, send rich text and emojis and gifts and all kinds of stuff, but it's from a centralized number for your whole office. If an agent is texting a client, all of that conversation is staying in the agent's own CRM. Um, but if you do transfer a client, they'll have the history of these SMS discussions. Again, it's great for team type uses or admin type uses where someone else is having the initial conversations and you want to retain that. If you're only talking to them through SMS on your phone or with your phone number, it's very hard to get all that data. First of all, it's very hard to remember it and keep it. You get too many texts if you're like anybody these days. And so it's a great way to nurture and, and create, um, you know, meaningful conversation along this path. You can log notes. Dog's name is Millie, for instance. Um, and then you can set a reminder. Remember, we wanted to have coffee on Friday. Let's set up Starbucks or coffee. Um, you know, let's do it at Starbucks. And let's do it Friday. Can't believe May is already over. I'm gonna do it at, call it, uh, I don't know, 5 p.m. I like late afternoon coffee for whatever reason. And I wanna notify Tiger of this too, which will create a reminder for him and for me. And so now on my calendar, my Gmail calendar, I have this new reminder. And so that's the email integrated power. If you have email integration, you have two-way text, then you can really keep a conversation going. And it is worth noting that as people are searching, it's keeping up with all the different zip codes that they're, they're, they're searching and the price ranges that they're searching. Um, so there's a lot more to this, but I think that's a, a pretty good summary of like how you take people from just met them at coffee, it's Tiger Woods, I really wanna sell this guy a house, he hates noisy areas, I can use the IDX to really whittle down a consumer friendly search for him that he could optionally invite his spouse to, and then I, from the CRM, can start to manage everything in one spot and keep it all together. And so that is um, really where the IDX and the CRM uh, come together. Okay, so let's look at a few other things. You might be wanting to win a listing for a particular zip code. So if you're a selling agent, so great, Rick, you talked a bunch about buyers. What do I do for sellers? Well, for sellers, you could do things like tag search. Our new people in the CRM, which is what you're seeing here, has the ability to, you know, remember everything that someone's searching, particularly zip codes, is being tracked. And so I can, with just typing one zip code, sit in front of a would-be, you know, um, client and, and, and say, look, I'm going to send to, you know, 25, 50 some odd people a, um, 
an email, uh, which I'll show you how you do in the list manager here in a minute, but an email right after you sign this listing agreement um, to uh, tell them that, you know, I have a new coming soon listing even before I hit the MLS or do any kind of pre-marketing. So that's a great way to, to use the system with, with the seller. Um, as I get into collaboration here in just one minute, I'll show you more ways that you can do that. Um, let's talk about lists. So lists are uh, a very fun way to create lots of IDX accounts really quickly to do exactly what I just did, but at grand scale. So if you've not used the CRM much, the first thing you should be thinking is how do I get as many people into this thing as possible with an account on my, my search platform, my, my, my main uh, website and IDX. Um, if I have a list that I've already created, I can always call upon it. So like this was a list I imported a while back and I can come back and say, you know what, this person's not real, I'm gonna remove them. And this person's not real and they never responded to me for whatever reason and you know whatever else, kind of take a quick look at them if you want hit back and get get back there. So, but anyway, let's remove a couple of folks and hit save and that'll just allow you to update these lists or you might decide, you know, this list is just super stale. Let's just delete it. And that's how you do that. So it's pretty obvious. Um, there's a lot that's coming in this area as far as mass email and sort of bulk email and bulk text. That's kind of a, a later year set of features to help you with more uh, marketing around the platform. Um, okay, so let's build uh, a list. I uh, just did a 78704 one, but let's actually import one. So one of the first things you'll see when you initially log in is it's going to have this invitation to upload your leads. Now, you're going to forget some of this unless you come back and watch the video. So don't forget that the, the way to remember is actually just to come in here and ask questions. And so this is us. You can see who all is online right now ready to help you. And so if I couldn't remember how to import, I just type the word import. And our very own, I believe, Chance Casey has written a really great article recently on how you would import your leads and keeps it updated as things change, right? Which, you know, been there for a while, but he continues to update and improve it. It has a link to our template, which will take you out to uh, uh, Google Sheets. And from here, this is the format your leads need to uh, comply with. So what most people do is they have a list that probably doesn't look just like this. And so what you would do is simply create a new, new sheet and then copy and paste your other CSV into it. And then column by column, just replace the stuff below it. So, you know, keep everything in, of course, the right order, but you know, it needs to be in this order and the, in the column names need to be named as they are here with uppercase and lowercase exactly as they are. Lead importing is a finicky business, and so it's important and, and you know uh, to just kind of you have to do it this way. Um, but it's worth it's worth the effort. And so I've created one for today's discussion with three people: Randy, Roger, and Ronnie. And I've added a, a, a new tag in here of Savvy You, and um, let's just say I want these folks to be well, we'll call them clients. Um, you, you, you put the agent email that you want them assigned to. So if you had, for the whole office, you had different agents in here that you imported and combined into one sheet, you could import them all together, or you could do it one by one, totally your option. But let's do this really quickly, just to show you again, I'm not gonna go through the whole experience, but I am gonna upload it and create these leads with um, import leads here. Um, and I'm gonna open this file. And you can see Randy, Roger, and Ronnie are here. Now, I'm logged in as me, so clearly I want to assign these to me, but I might not be. I may be an admin, and at which point I might want to select someone else in the list or just leave them unassigned and deal with it later. It just really depends on what use case you're active after. Um, the key is if you upload lists that have emails, and if those emails aren't currently being used by a user, um, you can um, create IDX accounts for each of them. And so remember we had Tiger going over here on a search. So we're gonna add 3000 at realsavvy.com here in just a second, our, our, our Randy or eight. And so I'm gonna import this whole bucket with one click. And now they're all there. And now they all have IDX accounts and it's ready for me to do stuff. To prove that, I'm gonna invite Mr. 3000, which was, I think that was Randy. And you know, while we're at it, let's invite Ronnie too. And so it's that easy to invite a couple more people into the search. You can keep, you know, all these folks moving together and, and, and 
in, in the ways that you would want. Okay, so next piece of the puzzle is collaboration. And this is our most distinct difference and real savvy from what's out there. Um, our map search is great, our, our, our multi-polygons, our neighborhood search, all those things are really great. The, the websites tend to be very beautiful and, and make you, in the eyes of your consumers, you know, relevant, right? Which is really what you want with the website is just that they don't run away from it because it's old. We happen to have ones that are really good at being page one viable on SEO and et cetera. But collaboration is, is largely the name of the game to separate yourself and pull them away from the portals. And as a 21 year practitioner, I can promise you this is the way that I've successfully done this at, at you know many, many, many times. Uh, hundreds of clients since we started the company have stopped sending me Zillow links and my wife, Zillow links, who's also an agent in favor of this experience. And I'll show you a couple of those here in a minute. Um, but let's do it live. So we've got Tiger. Tiger may like this Bolden Avenue home. And so I'm going to say, you know, uh, thought, you would like this one, right? And I'm gonna create a new board. And in this case, I'm gonna just call it the Tiger Collection. And I'm gonna save it. Now, all of this is available on your mobile app as well. But the next question is, do I wanna to go to this board or this collection? Or do I wanna invite people to it? Well, I don't have Tiger on it, so it probably makes sense to go ahead and do that. So let's add Tiger. So there's Tiger. And we wanted Johnny 3000 here or Randy 3000 or whatever you call them. We wanted him on there too. And so now I've got two people on my board and one home. But we probably want some more stuff. So let's come back to our search. And let's add, I think this hillside one might be a good fit. Perhaps this one. And I want to add that to my tiger board. And remember, these are just favorites. It's the same way that everyone today would organize the selection of new countertops or uh, paint colors or whatever you'd use Pinterest for. Um, this is what you do with Home Search on Real Savvy. And this is the best way to build and retain momentum with your, with your clientele. And so um, perhaps, you know, also. And so what's happening now is Tiger, I, and, uh, Randy and I are getting text messages for everything that I'm adding, inviting them with deep links, which just basically means it'll pull them right back into here. And so I'm leaving these comments. You might view this as the three homes that we're going to look at on Saturday. Hey guys, here's the three that I think are good fits. If you find more, you pin them, you comment on them, and I'll figure out if we can go look at them. The next thing I want to show you is perhaps my favorite feature as, a, as an agent. I, I do want to forewarn, it's not available in every market. There are reasons that VAO data, as it's called, things like agents showing instructions and whatnot cannot be shown on every market. It's a bit of a bureaucratic MLS decision market by market. Austin happens to allow it. We have an integration with the Austin Board of Realtors that allows it. Many, many of our markets do, but not all. If it's a, if it's a feature that you think you get great value of, out of, please contact us and we'll see what we can do. It may have a cost. Uh, it's hard to say for sure, but I can get the showing instructions for these homes on my app and on my um, web you know, experience here. And that's super helpful if I'm at a stoplight. So my client says, Tiger, uh, hey, can we go look at 1225 Hillside Avenue? I don't know by memory. So I can come in here and see, you know what, it looks like the uh, showing instructions, I have to make an appointment with Katie Jackson here. And so I could, from the app, text her from here, I would just start to email her or call her or whatever the case would be. And so that's just sort of a, a way that when we focus on agent client experience, that's a great example of what we think is super valuable. The other element that's going on here is the discussion. And so Tiger over here, I'm gonna bring him up on a different screen. So this is Tiger's screen. Uh, I'm gonna come in and I'm going to find that board, which show up here is his only one. Same stuff that we're seeing over here behind is what Tiger's seeing. And Tiger might say um, uh, at 2021, which is the address here on, on Travis Heights, um, love this one. What do you think, Randy? Let's just say Randy's his cat. And so Randy just got a text. My phone just buzzed right now. Um, we're all being pulled back into this moment of what did, what did Tiger want to ask? And this is why it's so important because 
it is often the case, and the real reason that I started Real Savvy back in the you know five years ago was I had clients that were sending me 15 Zillow links and 15 Redfin links, a couple out of the bay, literally. They had coffee without me a couple of times, said, I don't want to see this one. I don't like this one, but they weren't doing a good job of telling me all the stuff that they were talking about. And so I was doing all this work, setting up showings with agents, telling the agents later, hey, they changed their mind, super frustrating for both sides. This solves that. And this allows you to really understand who's real, be most you know, uh, hyper responsive to those that are, that, are, that are generating the most interesting data for you. And if you have your whole database moving this way, you're going to uncover data that you otherwise would have had no idea. As we all know, buyers particularly don't move in a traditional funnel. They they kind of bounce into a home purchase decision because they had a good cup of coffee and their kids aren't in school on a Friday uh, when it's raining, right? It's very random. Clearly, there's prescriptive moments where they're like have to move for school or whatever. But as we all know, more often than not, it's like, you really want to buy today? I didn't even have you on my radar today. And so that's the, or you want to go look today? I didn't even have you on, on my radar today. So that's what we're trying to solve with this. And you have access to all of this. It's simple as save a home, put it somewhere in a collection, invite some people to it. Take control of the search for your clients, get them moving, get the husband and the wife or the husband and the husband or the wife and the wife, whatever the dynamic is, the roommates, if it's leasing, all on these boards together. Now, this is a lot to swallow. An easy way to think about collections is there's two other really fun use cases. One is pin just the home that is your uh, listing, right? So, and invite your sellers to it. Two things are going to happen. One, you can communicate with them. I'll just play that for a minute. You know, I sent an e-flyer to 15,000 Travis County agents today. Send this at five o'clock while they're having cocktails on Friday so that they're in front of their peers and say, you know, hey, Rick's hustling. This is awesome. And they'll keep the app open while someone went to the restroom and they'll, you know, start playing around and searching and generating more data for you. That's a very simple way. If you're in an office, the simplest way to understand collaboration is pin all of your office listings to a single board and make sure that all of your agents and your administrators and anyone else that touches your business are on the board. It's a great way to invite people to help you with an open house, ask a question about a setback that you don't know the answer to, and for everybody to know that you've got a listing right now and what the current status is. And so this is simple ways to generate muscle memory around a new feature. For most people, technology can be a bit overwhelming and daunting, and, and we're covering a lot on a video so that you can potentially watch this back or go to our help with some specific questions. It's not expected that you would immediately grasp all of this, although many of you will and many of you already are, um, but want to rehash it because it is the thing that is, as you think about how am I getting value of this platform? lead capture, uh, a, a consumer-friendly IDX, a, a mobile app that you can share, et cetera. Um, but the collaboration is the thing that will your buyer will say, oh, well, that was different. That is worth my time. And so here's what's going to happen. The first time you share it, many people are going to continue sending you Zillow links. And you're immediately going to be frustrated and thinking the platform's not working. Look, these people have muscle memory from 10 years of Zillow. You can't break it just by saying, hey, do this. But they trust you. They trust that you have their best interest in mind. I've seen this in practice. My wife has seen this in practice. All, you know, all of our power user agents see it in practice. When they send you a Zillow pin or Zillow link, go into your platform, go into your app, and pin it. Just keep pinning them. Thank you for sending that. Pinned it. Thank you for sending that. Pinned it. Remember, they're getting text links that are going to open them back up into the app and back up into the conversation. And that's where you will ultimately shift their behavior. Um, for people that have never been, you know, you know, new buyers, first time home buyers, you can totally sway their first experience. But I'll say one final thing. As much as we love our platform, if you have someone using Matrix or Paragon or, or whatever, and they're like two weeks away from buying, don't change anything. Right? Keep them on the things that they're generating data for you for. Think of this as the, your, your sort of antidote for the Zillow wanderers or the people that are just adamant that they have to do things certain ways. And, and let us know the features that may be missing that keep them from making the full switch. We've, we've spent five years building things that we think have solved the bulk of the problem. But every market's different. Everybody has different ways they sort of conduct business. And so we want to be flexible to your, to your feedback in that way. Um, so with that, I think we've covered the main use cases for the app. Let me see if I can share 
my app here. This is always the fun part of demos because it sort of sometimes behaves. Yep, not behaving. Give me just one more second. Amazingly challenging to share your phone on a computer screen these days, which is amazing. All right, this usually means good things. So, all right, so same app, same everything. Um, we have two types of apps. There's a real savvy app that most of you have, which is what you see with the V here. And if, and if you've purchased it from us, you can change the icon on the deck. Um, if you want, you can have a standalone app, which is what's represented by a few of these others here. You can tell I have too many children photos, so all my apps are like hidden, but not downloaded because I don't have any space on my phone. But alas, that's a different problem. Um, and it's a good time check that we have four minutes here, five minutes. Um, so you can see it's fully branded. This is everything that you're seeing on the web. Importantly, all of the saved searches, all of, and we've changed the name to collections. You're gonna see this come through in the, in the web app here shortly. We're moving from the term boards to collections. Right at the very top is my tiger collection. Right there at 1404 is a way that I can click in as an agent. Typically I'd be here because my client like Tiger would have said, hey, can we go look at it? Again, in certain markets, you have this MLS plus button at the bottom and that's going to allow you to see and, and, and text and get showing instructions and things like that. Um, the gallery is really convenient and fast. Um, it has fun features that I wanted very badly as an agent like zoom and landscape view. You have great features like driving directions that are integrated for if you create a board of the five homes you're going to go look at, you can you know help yourself get around. I, I no matter how many how well I know a neighborhood, I always forget. But you see this Rick Orr right here in the middle. You as the agent float around with your consumer experience. It's the same thing they see. They just don't see the MLS Plus button um, everywhere they go. And all we're trying to do is get them to ask you questions, and save stuff, and chat, and generate new generate new information, right? And so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the power of, of, of the app. And it becomes about 80% of search once you share it with someone. Um, street view is another really popular feature where you can see what it's gonna look like on the street. And that's, you know, if you're working with investors or things like that. Um, so quickly, um, I just wanted to show the um, sharing. And the rest is, let me do one more thing. I do wanna show you how it looks to chat. So this is all that same conversation that we've got going on behind your screen here. This is Tiger. I'm logged in as me on the phone. This is me on the, on the web. So you know you've got kind of like a multi-dimensional uh, view here, but bear with me. Um, it's important to kind of see it all together and know what, how everything ties into CRM mobile app and web. But when you share from the web, from, uh, from the, um, from the uh, app, if you're logged in, this link will connect your people back to you. And so even if you are not the purchasing broker, and if you have, you're part of a 50 person or a 500 person office, when you're logged in and you share, all of that data is going to be attributed to you as the agent. And that's how lead assignment works. Now, we have really robust lead assignment rules. It's a separate conversation for those that are managing teams and want only 78704 to go to three agents first to claim or round robin. That's a that's available too. But um, this is the you know all important part of how you share, how you share listings, and you know some of the other key features of the app and the platform um, as as a whole. So you know I've covered a lot quickly. Um, this video will be available and, and ideally helpful um, for. Um, you know, re rehashing these these concepts. Um, we covered how to save a search, how to create an account, crm.realsavvy.com is, is, your, is your login, which is the same as your IDX login, and the same as your mobile app login for that matter. Um, I should close out with one final thing, which is our marketing platform at marketing.realsavvy.com. Every agent that's live on the platform has access to this. Uh, which is a simple way to publish your listings and promote your listings on Facebook. And so we'll pull in the photos from the MLS. We do all the hard work of creating the creative. You can put fun stuff like emojis in there, pick your zip codes, set your budget, put down your credit card and start marketing. And it generates really, really great leads. 
So that's available to you. We have managed services like concierge that we've just recently started offering. We can generate leads for you. Our team will talk to these leads, not in an agency way, but we'll qualify them, figure out you know, what, uh, what they're looking for, even set up a search for them and then transfer them to, to your uh, team. So if that's something of interest to you as an agent, uh, broker, or team, let us know at sales at willsavvy.com. And beyond that, thank you all for your time. Um, intercom, I'm sorry. Show them intercom. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Zach was helping me here. Uh, uh, go to intercom if you have any questions. This is this is again. It's on the website. It, we, if you're logged in, we know it's you. Um, we know what steps you've taken, so we can help you more. Um, not in a creepy way. We're just we're just there to try and help. And then if you want to start a conversation, you just simply start typing, and this will send a support ticket out and 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 get to everybody on the team. Uh, instantly. So, so that's the, the quick refresh on everything. I hope this has been helpful. If there's any, um, you know, immediate conversations, we can stay on for a few minutes here. Um, and otherwise we'll, uh, put this on the website and send this out for everybody's, um, um, internal use and distribution for those that didn't make the call. And, and please, again, um, have your team join our, our Facebook community. Um, we want it to be a community. We, we, we care immensely about your feedback. Most of everything that's been done for the really the last three years has been driven by our customers' requests. Um, and, we, and we're not done. You know, it's always evolving. We're adding things like bulk email and bulk text. We just added two-way text and list builders to the CRM. Um, so if you can't tell, we're constantly working. We try to release something important and new every couple of weeks. And, um, and we're grateful to have you as part of the Real Savvy family. So I don't see any questions coming across quite yet. So I think for time, since we've kind of hit our, our number right on the dot, um, I'll probably call, uh, turn off the recording and everything now, but please remember uh, right here is where we are. Um, thank you all for joining. We'll send you this out later. And um, please, please just, you know, start using it. it, it, it's, it, it it'll feel daunting at first, but I promise like anything, just like it was hard for us to learn matrix or our own MLS, just a little bit of muscle memory. You know the concepts that you want to achieve. Ask us questions of how you do it. And we'll tell you honestly what we can and can't do and tell you if we can maybe build it or maybe make it part of the roadmap. So thank you all. Have a great rest of the week and uh, last few days of May here. Cheers.